Good Saturday morning from Okaboji. Well, it's another gorgeous day. It's in the 80s already. It's supposed to be in the 90s and a heat index in the hundreds. So as my mother used to always say, get your swimsuit wet and stay cool. Today, uh, for the fun of it, I am up at the spillway uh, on Big Spirit Lake and it's just a great area. I'm gonna take a couple little video or uh, take a couple little pictures of this but what I also really want to do is I'm going to kind of let and have an interview with Jonathan Reed. And he has a new book out about the lost resorts here at the Iowa Great Lakes. And I want to have him tell you all about this book. If you haven't seen this book, you really, really should get a copy or take a look. Because it, 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 if you know anything about the history of Okaboji, it is really, really, really cool. Okay. So here is the spillway up on the south shore of Big Spirit Lake. A uh, guy putting a boat in and a couple kids fishing and we've still got water running over the spillway. The other thing that I don't think a lot of people even notice or something, there's just a wonderful public beach up here and there are, I'm under kind of a little uh, uh, shelter and there's some swing sets and everything else. So sometime if you're looking for a fun public beach, come up to near the spillway on Big Spirit Lake. Okay, now you need to listen to Jonathan Reed. Okay, here I am with Jonathan Reed, and I want him to tell all of you about his wonderful book. Jonathan, tell us about your book on uh, old resorts. Okay, I'm gonna remove my safety mask here because we're just about six feet apart and we're outside. Uh, Kirk, thanks for asking me to tell you a little bit about this. This is the latest book, Lost Resorts of the Iowa Great Lakes. And it is, as the title would suggest, about the resorts that are not here anymore, that have gone by, or that have changed to such a degree that the original vision has evolved quite a bit over time. I think you already introduced and said that we're here at the south end of beautiful Big Spirit Lake. And this is really ground zero of our resort areas in Okaboji. In 1882, the railroads, railroad came up here just about 100 feet behind us and the engineers realized, this is a fantastic view. Let's put a resort here. Let's get people a reason to come here. And so in 1883, they built the magnificent Hotel Orleans. Now the Hotel Orleans was built to be the top of the top of the top to cater to the nations in the upper Midwest ultra wealthy and it was a huge wonderful looking thing for its time it had seven spires uh, it was four stories tall at this end three stories at the other end due to the slope of the ground it had 200 rooms it had a bowling alley the dining room itself was 50 by 60 feet and two stories tall and could accommodate 200 people at once it also had um, uh, it was 324 feet long. 324 feet long! Can you imagine a, a building on the shores of Okaboji that size now? Or even on Spirit Lake? So 324 feet long had 16 foot wide balconies so that people could promenade in, uh, in the style of the day. Uh, every room had flow through ventilation and it was the most modern. It, it was so modern it even had indoor toilets which not every place could talk about in those days. But that was opened in 19, excuse me, in 1883. Uh, they also brought in to accommodate people who wanted to tour the lake, because this was the first place. All they could do is tour Big Spirit Lake. So they brought in a steamship that they had built in Dubuque. It was called the Queen. Not many people know that the Queen actually sailed on Big Spirit for all those years until it was moved over to West Lake uh, at the turn of the century, 1900 and 1901. But anyway, uh, the reason why I wanted to come here is this is the history. This is where it began. This is what put Okaboji and uh, Big Spirit on, on the map. And in fact, for many years, it was just Big Spirit that was the, the place the people wanted to go to. Okaboji was not developed to any great degree. So people would come here they would fish just as we do now. They would bathe, they would go swimming in the water. They would ride on the boats. They would have rowboats that you could rent and be out on, on, on the lake 
and just enjoy being out on the cool water because there was no air conditioning. You needed to be outside. Truly a magnificent place. Let me tell you a little bit about this book. It took about two years to get together. Most of the uh, photographs came from the Maritime Museum. Thanks to Mary Kennedy and her late husband Steve for collecting all of those. I also solicited some from uh, individuals and other locations around the lake. So that as we talk about more modern resorts, uh, a lot of the mom and pop resorts. Uh, so the West Side Resort was down this way a little bit. Uh, Virgie South Side was down here to my, to my right a little bit. Uh, and right now on, uh, on Big Spirit, in terms of lakeside, traditional small cabin outdoor resorts, we have one. Sandbar Beach Resort up at the, the, the northeast side of Big Spirit Lake. And uh, it really, that resort is really a time warp. Uh, not to give them an ad for no money at all, but they deserve it for being, you know, being with us, still offering the same type of uh, resort experience that your grandparents would have had in the teens, 20s, 30s, 40s. That can't be beat. If Jonathan, you, yes. where can we get your book? Right now, the book is available at Books and Things at the Queens Court, uh, also in, Ar in Arnold's Park, also in Arnold's Park at the Maritime Museum. The um, Barn Swallow has laid in a huge supply of them. And thank you, Barn Swallow, for giving me a marketing tagline. The book that everyone's been waiting for, I didn't do that, they did. And uh, I understand it's also available at... Um, at Parks Marina as well. And I'm hoping to have it placed in other locations that people come to and, and visit here at the lakes. Wonderful. Well, Jonathan, I have just started to read the book. I am fascinated. It is a classic. And if you have any connection to Okaboji, you really, really, really need to get this book. Even if you didn't stay at a resort, I brought a colored copy for you of my first book, which is the general history of the area. They're all photographically driven, so it's photo caption, photo caption. You can pick them up, read a couple of pages, close it up and come back another day and you won't feel like you've lost the story. Wonderful. Jonathan, thank you so much. And everybody, from for both Jonathan and I, as I always say, take care, be safe, wear a mask, and enjoy Okaboji. Absolutely. Thanks, thank Kurt. you.